Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm glad you're here. I'm, Amen. I'm glad I'm here. So let's uh, worship the Lord and spirit and truth and uh, we'll get God involved in this and maybe, just maybe, we'll get excited for the Lord. How about that? Amen. Good to see Pete and uh, his wife. I forgot your name again. Carla. Carla. Pete and Carla. That you were with us in the fall. Uh, okay. We have actually been here one year this week. Yeah, 52 weeks ago we started services and this is our 52nd week. I say the 52nd week is because there was one week in December that we shut down because of the snow. Um, we couldn't, couldn't make it. It was too deep, amen? All right, this morning we're going to stand and sing page 256. 256, my Savior's love. I stand amazed. In fact, that's what we're doing, standing. Because we are amazed of what God has done for us. I hope you're amazed. Folks, I can't tell you the difference between... Uh, what we have in Christ versus what the world has, it, it's amazing to me that uh, they still exist in their, the way they live, the way the world lives today. It makes me wonder where they're getting their joy from, where they're getting their happiness from. And I say this all the time, I don't know how people do it without the Lord. I know I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Let's stand and sing. Page 256, yeah. I, I stand amazed, my Savior's love. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene, and how he could love me. Can you open us up in a word of prayer? Father, we thanks, Lord, the day you've given us a day for the Father, we thanks, Lord, for people that have come out today. Ask, Lord, for the, those that couldn't be here, those that are traveling, those that are with family here, Father. I give a special uh, uh, thanks for the men and women that give us the rights and the freedom as we celebrate Memorial Day today and remember them. Lord, also to be with the lost and less fortunate. Ask the Lord to be with the pastor who brings the message today. And your Father, I ask the Lord to be with the sins we've committed and what we've done. So we ask all things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 
Amen. Page 223. Uh, page 223 is well with my soul. I hope it's well with your soul today. Uh, we um, had a uh, internment at the gravesite for my Uncle Lyle, <coughs> and this was his favorite song. And uh, it was about it is well with his soul because he's why he's in heaven. Amen. So I hope it's well with your soul. Let's sing page 223. It is well with my soul. your soul today. Uh, I can't think of uh, what it would be like if it wasn't. <laughs> if your soul's not well, it means you're not saved. Amen. Uh, we need salvation, do we not? The world needs to be saved. Uh, their soul would be a lot different if it was. 
All right, grab your bulletins. We'll look at some of the announcements going on. Again, we're having Memorial Day service today, but memorial service for the cemetery is tomorrow at the Port Sanilac uh, Cemetery. It's at 11 o'clock. How many have ever attended a memorial service at the cemetery on Memorial Day? You're missing. If you hadn't, go. you should try to get there at least once in your lifetime. Uh, the VFW does a really good job. Some, you know, are a little bit different. Uh, these folks, they do a pretty good job. They have a chaplain that comes out and talks a little bit about uh, the soldiers that have passed. Uh, all of the graves have flags put on them, just like we have. This is a, a mini Arlington we have out front here where the crosses and the flags are in front of it. By the way, there's 21 of those crosses, and we'll explain what that means here in a little bit. But uh, a Memorial Day is a day of memory of those that sacrificed for us to have the freedom to be in this church, to have the freedom to read this book, and have the freedom to pray openly. Uh, not every country is like that, and we'll see as the service continues. But uh, today is uh, our Memorial Day service, and we like to acknowledge that, uh, in fact, the title of the sermon is Lest We Forget. And uh, by the way, if you think about it, Memorial Day, what's that mean? Memory. How about in the front of this flag, right, the words that are right there? Do this in what? In remembrance. And, and why is that, folks? We forget. <laughs> I forget where my keys are every day. You know, I mean, we need to be reminded. You know, they got that, uh, that clapper now that makes a, a whistle go off where your keys are because you always forget where you put them. Uh, I forgot my belt this morning, uh, and we're sitting there talking. Where's my belt? And my mom's pointing at it. <laughs> Oh, okay. I just put it there five minutes ago. So we are forgetful. Uh, we are forgetful people. Amen. But that's why we have Memorial Day to remember those that gave their life for us in battle for our country. And uh, uh, that's the reason that we have this day. It's not that we should ever forget, but it's this day we set aside just to memorialize those graves. And by the way, we're also here to memorialize an empty one, too. His name is Jesus Christ. His tomb is empty, and we remember that every single Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Every time people gather, we pass out tracts. Pray for the tracts before you hand them out. Let God get involved in it. Lord, who do you want this tract to go to? And how many have ever passed out and given a tract to an individual that you didn't know? It's really neat to do that. It's, it's interesting to do that. Um, just go up to a str random stranger and hand them, here's a gospel tract. Uh, Lord will bless you for it, too, by the way. He'll bless you for it. That's that test we're talking about in Sunday school, about that test that you that God wants to give you. And, and he said, oh, I can't do it. He said, I'm going to give you another test in a minute. I can't do it. Well, I'll try it again here in a minute. He'll have people after people walking up to you, and you have the opportunity to ask out of track, and you won't do it. Eventually, the Lord's going to say, okay, fine. I'll find somebody else to do it. That's how he works, too, by the way. He'll give you all the time you need to pass the test. So pray for that. Pray for the tracks. Uh, pray for lost souls to be saved, our missionaries. We were with six preachers, pastors yesterday at a picnic of local churches in, the, in our area. Bay City, Standish, Vassar. I can't remember all of them. There was a lot of church people there. I mean, a lot, uh, we had, uh, it was a picnic, and Brother Clark, our missionary that we support for tracks, he was showing us his printing press, and, and he showed me all the boxes of tracks going to Korea and Indonesia. And it was just really neat to see a, a missionary that we support in action. So it was a good blessing to, to be a part of that. Met a lot of new preachers. Pastor Flood was there, who we, who we were before. But uh, <coughs> it was really neat having other churches come together and with, to support a missionary and then to see the missionary actually doing the work. And we met a new missionary that's going to the Philippines, and he's going to be the same island that Brother White's at, one of our other missionaries. And we tried to hook them two together uh, so that they can introduce. They don't even know each other. They're going to do the same thing. <coughs> I hope that was God allowing us to put those two together so they can do better out there. All right, uh, don't forget to pray for all of our missionaries. Pray for each other. Our tithe reports there. Our memory verse, how many got it down? You should have this one down. Let's try it. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Pretty simple. I think we can get that one. 
Can't you? So we got what? Uh, one, one more week, or is this is this the last week? <coughs> All right. If you got to get it, got to get it now. Amen. And next week we've got another one. So uh, again, seek out the world, uh, the book of the Lord, and read. We often per, uh, promote reading the Bible all through in a year. If you are reading the Bible, the estimated place of your reading should be around Psalms 25. Um, and you can give or take a few. Uh, generally, you'll be done December, January. Um, I read my Bible, and I get done in July. So I'm going to try and start over in January so I can be with the church. Because then if we all read the Bible at the same time, at the same pace, folks, I'm telling you that it influenced you and it influence the preacher. It influenced the preaching and the pretext or whatever you call it. If you're reading your Bible, for example, uh, if you read Psalms 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, maybe yesterday, you know that influences you for today. It will influence you, and it influences the preaching. It influences your life. And if we're all in one accord, guess what happens? The Lord shows up. So uh, I'll, I'll be with you next year, hopefully, when we start it, but I do try to uh, keep an eye on where you need to be. All right, the quote for the week is from Sam Shoemaker. How many know who he is? Neither do I. All right. I think it, uh, I thought it was a great saying because it, it applies. This is a, someone from our forefathers. It, it applies to us today. I think it is that the nations are no better than the men who make them up. That nation, national policy can arise no higher than the standard of the people. That every man's greatest contribution to national life is his own faith and integrity. What is amazes me today is the world that we live in today. Amazes me. We have no faith and we have no integrity. Hence the issues we have with our country. Folks, be praying for our country and their leaders, our leaders. Uh, they need it. They need it more than ever before. To this day is, is rough. Uh, you see the headlines. Uh, I read a headline this morning. North Korea, an infant, was sentenced to life in prison in North Korea because their parents were found with a Bible. How low can we go? Talk about trial and temptation. A two-year-old, I think we mentioned it was a two-year-old, was sentenced with their parents to life in prison because of a Bible, because of what you have in your hand, because of what this word, this book. Folks, we live in a great country. We still have the ability to have this. Here's the question, how long? if we keep going the direction we're going. Please pray for our leaders and America. At this time, we'll ask for prayer requests. I have two up here that were on the, in the box. We have a prayer request box back there. Uh, my family for unity. Someone asked for uh, unity in their family, and generally that means that there's strife in their family. So let's pray for this family. Another prayer request that we have, uh, to live a life that pleases the Lord. That's a good prayer request. Uh, how about this one? For a service that praises, edifies, and honors our Lord and Savior and opens our eyes to his holiness and preeminence. I guess that's for the preacher, amen? <laughs> so we can pray for those too. And that's a good prayer, folks. Uh, a good prayer request is for yourself to be enlightened by God today and every day. If you don't open God's word, he doesn't speak to you any other way. He'll show you things in nature. He'll show you things in, in maybe your spouse or the love that you see in the world, but he doesn't speak to you until you read his word. What kind of relationship would you have if it was only one-sided? We're going to pray for our prayer requests, but you need to read the word. Amen? So that's, that's very important. All right, prayer requests for today. All right, any other prayer requests? Yes. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for this day, Lord. I pray, Father, you'd help us. We are a people in need, God, and Father, you know each and every single heart that's here, and I pray, Almighty God, for them. I pray, Lord, you'd, you'd answer everybody's prayer, Father, whether it's uh, what we want to hear or not. I just still pray, dear God, that you'd hear us and then answer, Lord, please. 
We pray for America. We pray for our leaders, Father. We pray, God, for our president and our Congress. God, they need help, Lord. I pray you'd influence them to make the right decisions. Father, there's so many things on the table, Lord. Uh, obviously, you're, you're the ultimate uh, person in charge. And God, I know that there's not a single thing going to happen to this country unless it's ordained of you. And Father, we just trust you for that, Lord, and we ask you to help us to get through it. And your, your kids, Lord, your saints, your, your saved people, Lord, I pray, Father, you'd allow us to endure anything that happens with our country. And God, the things that are going to happen, I pray you give us, like you promised us, everything that we need and provide everything that you would your own children, Lord. And thank you, God, for being our Father. Father, we pray for uh, a unity for this family that asks for prayer. Uh, Father, we pray to God for that we would praise you today. We glorify you in, in our service. Father, I pray for all the doctors and nurses that are dealing with these folks. I pray you'd help them, give them the wisdom to help them uh, get better. And God, just be with each and every one of us as we uh, struggle through this present evil world. I pray you give us that peace that passeth all understanding. Pray for this morning's service, God, that we would remember you. Uh, lest we forget, Lord, thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All righty, let's uh, turn our hymnals to page 146. 146. We don't pass the plate around here. We have a little box in the back. Uh, uh, if you want to give to this work, that's fine. That's between you and God, and that's how it's supposed to be. Left hand don't know what the right hand's supposed to do. Uh, so we just, uh, that's how we do it. We don't pass the plate around. Um, but there is a little box, and we ask the Lord to bless it every time. Amen. Let's stand and sing page 146. Uh, this is a great title, Jesus Paid It All. Amen. 146, Jesus Paid It All. Aren't you glad he did? Amen. We don't have to pay it. Amen. Hallelujah. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed small child of weakness watch and pray find in me thine all in all Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he washed it white as paid that price for you and I, he gave us a responsibility to remember that time at Calvary.
when he paid for your sins and mine. And folks, that's why we're here today. Amen. I know today is Memorial Day, and Miss Reed and I are going to be singing a song here. <coughs> and uh, I don't know if you realize this, but if you're a saved person here today, you are a soldier of the cross, are you not? And uh, by the way, you have a mandate. You have When you said, I do, you said, Lord, I believe you. <coughs> now that you're a soldier of the cross, guess what you're in now? Yes. The fight of your life, amen? <laughs> Come on up, Miss Reed. We'll sing. Praise the Lord. He's gonna, he will prevail, amen? How many are trusting the Lord with all their heart? How many don't trust their own understanding? Amen. 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 I'm a soldier bound for glory. I'm a soldier. Going home, come and hear me tell my story. All who love the Savior come. I love Jesus, hallelujah. I love Jesus, yes I do. I love Jesus. He's my Savior, Jesus smiles and loves me too. I will tell you what induced me in this glorious fight to start. T'was the Savior's loving kindness over. Won my heart. Some may say that I'm too noisy, but I'll tell you the reason why. If they only felt the glory, they would shout as well as I. When to death's dark, swelling river, like a warrior, I shall come. Then I need to shout salvation and go singing glory home. I'm a soldier bound for glory. I'm a soldier going home. Come and hear me tell my story. All who love the Savior come. I love Jesus. Hallelujah. I love Jesus. Yes, I do. I love Jesus, he's my Savior, Jesus smiles and loves me too. Amen. Every single one of us have enlisted in this army, as others have in the past enlisted in the army of uh, society and, and, and went into battle. We want to recognize the veterans out there today, so uh, we want to not lift them up, but to remember what they did and sacrificed for us. And today is Memorial Day. I don't know how many people know where Memorial Day came from, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it and then preach about it and allow the Lord to get involved in it because I believe it's important that we not only remember what's happened in our past, but what's going to happen in the future. Amen? How many here are saved and going to heaven? Amen. That's your future. You're not there yet. That's your future. How many remember it every single day? Sometimes we lose sight of our future. Sometimes we lose sight of what Jesus Christ did, what his sacrifice was. And folks, that's natural humanistic views. We lose sight of what sacrifices others have done for us. 
Um, Memorial Day was basically introduced from the Civil War in 1863, and it actually happened in Columbus, Mississippi, when uh, a mother was decorating the two graves of some southern boys, and my southern friends would be happy about that. They would not be happy about her going over to the two mounds that were not marked from a couple of northern soldiers that died. She memorialized her own sons and then went to the enemy and memorialized them too. Somebody asked her, what are you doing that for? He, she said, I know there's somebody, a wife or a mother or a father, grieving for the same reason I'm grieving. And it was established a memorial, and that's how basically it kind of took off. And by the way, in Michigan, it was called Decoration Day. And uh, in 1871, uh, and, and by 1890, every northern state had followed suit that happened in Mississippi, so something that was influenced from the south. Um, it was called Decoration Day and changed to Memorial Day, and it was first used in 1882. It did not really become really common in America until after World War II. It was not declared uh, federal law until 1967, which is you know just fairly recent. So Memorial Day is something that the, our country does memorialize those that have given their life for others. Uh, it's a day that the flag of the United States is flown half mast for half day and then raised. Um, how many know what the 21 gun salute is? You ever heard of that on a, on a veterans? How many know why 21 gun? This is a trivia question you could take home with you. And it's seen as a moral day, you can use this and ask, hey, why 21? 1776, how many know that date? Mm -hmm. 1 plus 7 plus 7 plus 6 equals 21. 21-gun 21 salute. So um, uh, I have been a part of a couple 21-gun salutes, and uh, it's really remarkable the emotion that comes from either a 21-gun salute or taps. How many have heard taps before? Mm -hmm. Now, that Murphy's Law, I had prepared a President Reagan on TV to uh, memorialize this day, and I was going to show you a real taps done at Arlington. Which, I don't know about you, but uh, to me, TAPS pulls my heartstrings. I don't know why, it does. And probably because of former military, it allows you to remember that there's not all your friends that you served with are here. And I think of the ones that, I, my dear friends that I lost, in fact, we talked about them yesterday, uh, PSC Roof, uh, he died. Dennis died. Uh, John Wayne died, that was his nickname. And we talked about them. These are friends of mine that when I, we were in the Marine Corps together, they're not here today. Um, and they were young, 18-year-old, 19-year-old young men that lost their life in the service of their country. Folks, how many know how many people have done that before in the past? Today we want to honor and memory of those who sacrificed their lives on the altar of freedom. And that's what I call it, an altar of freedom those that have taken the uniform and those that sacrificed their lives have not given it in vain because we, uh, as Americans, are uh, uh, enjoying the attributes of their sacrifice. Not only those that fought, but those that have given the ultimate sacrifice are those that we remember today. Now, Veterans Day is a different day. It remembers the veterans. But today we remember those that died in service for the country. I don't know if you understand the numbers. There was a commercial not done too long ago about Memorial Day, and it, it, it used the audio. It was more audio than it was visual. They took the pennies and, put, and poured them in a steel pan. How many remember that commercial? If you ever hear it, it'll impress you. Because what they do is they take all the wars, the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World War I, World War II, Korea War, and they pour the pennies in a pan so that you can hear how many pennies are going in for all the deaths. And it's just, it's, it's an audio thought to make you realize how many people lost their lives. In fact, the Revolutionary War to over 25,000. Civil War, almost 500, almost a half a million in the Civil War. Folks, those were brothers and sisters. That was in our own country. 
Half a million? World War I, over 116,000. World War II, another 407,000. Korea War, over 54,000. Vietnam War, over 58,000. The Gulf War, since its inception in 1999 to now, is roughly around 6,700. Folks, how many know people are still giving their life for this country and its beliefs? Turn with me in your Bibles to Numbers chapter 4, please. Numbers chapter 4. We're going to look what God thinks about all this. How many want to know what God thinks about Memorial Day, about the sacrifice? Do you know he, he actually shows us and teaches us the right way? Man will do it the opposite way, by the way. But God teaches us something here. Look with me in Numbers chapter 4. Look at verse number 14. Numbers 4, 14. The Bible says, And I looked, and I rose up, and said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, Be not, be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Let's pray. Father, I'm asking you, Almighty God, to help me this morning, dear Father. We need you, God. I need you, Lord. Help us to preach these words, dear God, that they might hear from you. They don't need to hear from me. We need to hear from you today, God. I pray, Lord, that you get involved in that. I pray for the Holy Spirit to take over, God. Father, I'm nothing, dear God. I pray, dear God, that uh, you increase and I decrease. Help me, Jesus. Help these people, God. They come here for a reason, God, and I pray you'd help them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we memorialize those who fought and sacrificed us for us the bible tells us also remember there is a cost to freedom this particular portion of scripture was a nation about to go to war and a leader giving an example of why we go to war there are churches called their conscientious objectors i had for i was familiar with one i actually pulled one out of their their denomination for that reason uh, I try to teach them and show them this verse right here, that there are sometimes a need, unbearable, un it's not something we want, and it's not something the Lord wants, but there is a need for war. Why is that? Because there's evil in this world. And this evil will not be uh, contained unless God gets involved in it. And this particular portion of Scripture God was convincing those to go to fighting a battle for what? Their wives, their children, their brethren, their daughters, their houses. But a house is just an inanimate object. Yes, it is, but it's where you live. Did God think highly of it? Yes. This is your home. Does God think highly of America? Yes, he does. But it's on the downward spiral right now. Hopefully, I'll, I'll get into that a little bit. I'm not real happy with America's direction, are you? I don't think God is either. I think God's judging America as we speak. We, thank God we live up here in the rural. We don't see a whole lot that's going in, down in some of these cities. But, folks, I'm telling you right now, the judgment of God is on America right now. If We just don't see it. But thank God for the child of God that knows God, that understands that he will provide despite the world's condition. Nehemiah reminded those that were fighting for their families to be not afraid and to remember the Lord. I remind you, Christian, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of what the, the future is going to hold in America. We're taught, these all these preachers, we all, in our one accord, we agreed, yes, this country is a mess. We agreed together that, yes, the Lord's going to provide for us despite the country's decisions. Well, there's not going to be no food, no water, no money, no jobs. It's going to be one currency. You know what? I trust the Bible. I asked you this morning, do you still trust Jesus? Do you still trust God? Don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him. Not your own thoughts. But what am I going to do for food? God said he'd take care of you. Do you believe him? You know what that's called, don't you? It's called faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Did we not memorize that? Why do we need to memorize that in 2023? Folks, because your faith is going to be tested. 
more and more as the day progresses, your faith will be tested. Will you stand up for Jesus Christ despite the circumstance that's around us? Or will you cave to the humanistic views of the way this world thinks it needs to be? Folks, there's an influence out there, and we call it the devil. <laughs> the devil is influencing the world in, a, in, in such a way today that you, as a Christian, as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, are at war with Satan. You're in a battle. No doubt, those that went to battle were encouraged by leaders uh, that lifted their spirits and reminded them of their cause. Can you imagine D-Day? How many have ever seen Saving Private Ryan? Do you know I couldn't even get through the first part of that show? I mean, I attempted to try. I really tried to... I think we had, I put it up about three or four times. I had to stop looking at it because it was so horrendous. Because I put myself in that picture. I was on an LZ boat just like that. I remember the front grate dropping just like that. I remember the guy in front of me and the guy behind him and me standing there waiting to get off this boat. Now picture D-Day on Normandy Beach and these guys... Don't you know that every single one of them were praying at that moment to their God? They were lifting up the Lord. The only way they got through any of those, that range of bullets that came through was because their God sent them through there. And they trusted in their God. Yes, they were afraid. Yes, we're afraid America is going downward. But folks, be rest assured, your God is not unaware everything that's happening. God knew who was going to heaven that day. And you know how many thousands of people on that day went into glory. God knew they were coming. It didn't take him by surprise. I'm sure the person that died in front of you as you were getting off that boat, you're going to my next. You could have been. You might have been. Folks, the, 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 the reason those men got in that boat and marched that beach is because they were inspired by something greater than themselves. You're here today because you're inspired by something greater than yourself. That which is in me is greater than that which is of the world. His name is Jesus Christ. That's how these men got through that. Now, were all of them saved? I don't know. But my friend, I do know this, that we are in a battle today against evil, against sin, against apostasy. Our freedoms are at risk as we speak, and you know it. You see it every day. Our duty today is to remind everyone of the cost, the price of freedom. That is your duty as a Christian here today, is to remind others there was a cost for the freedom that you enjoy. That cost was in the lives of hundreds of thousands of men, women, fighting for our country to have our freedoms. And it cost. But the freedom that you and I enjoy in the salvation of Jesus Christ cost God everything. Jesus Christ sacrificed his own blood for you and I, knowing that you and I were going to die someday. We're talking in Sunday school. If you're saved here today, this is the worst it's going to get for you. I don't care how bad it gets. It's the worst it's going to get. But if you're lost here today, that's the best it's ever going to be for you. That's a sobering thought. That the lost have nothing to look forward to. And folks, there were lost people going into battle. What did they die for? You have to ask that question. Why do we preach the gospel so hard? It's because we want everyone to know Jesus Christ as Savior. We want everyone to have the hope that you have of salvation after they die. Statistically proven, one out of one die. We're all going to die. If that's a sure fact and you know that, wouldn't you want to do something about it? <laughs> if you know your neighbor or your loved one's going to die in the future, wouldn't you want them to know that there is life after death? That's why we preach the gospel. Well, how does he do that? 
How do we do that today in 2023? I'm glad you asked. Turn to Isaiah chapter 62. The prophet Isaiah had spoken these words many, many, many years ago to the nation of Israel. And this principle carries on to us today in 2023. As preachers, as people in the pew that are saved, you have a responsibility on this side of glory. What is that responsibility? Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6, the Bible says, I have set a watchman upon the walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. What's the mandate? What's the principle? Don't shut up about this, folks. The world's going to try and tell you and push you down and say, listen, I don't want to hear about your Jesus. I don't want to hear about your God. I don't want to hear about eternal life. Folks, keep not silent. Keep preaching the gospel. Keep showing the gospel. That's our mandate from the, the uh, prophet Isaiah. Keep not silent. In Psalms 107, verse 2, you ought to know this verse. You ought to memorize this verse. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say what? He who he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Have you been redeemed from the devil? Are you saved? Are you born again? Does the devil have any rule over you? No, he does not. You are born again. The Lord says, then say so. Jesus saves. We sang that song. Yes, he does. I'm saved. Do you know that you're saved? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Do you not have a cause? Is there not a cause today? Look around you. Your family, your friends, your neighbors, your brethren, are they not worth it? I think that my children are worth it, don't you? I think my grandchildren are worth knowing the gospel of Jesus Christ, knowing that they can have eternal life when they die. Look what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Paul says this to the Corinthian church. For this cause, by the way, how many here have a cause today? Don't you have a mother, a father, a loved one that you know is lost? There's a cause. For this cause have I sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ as I teach everyone in every church. What's the cause? The cause is to remember his way. Did not Jesus say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life? No man come to the Father but by me? Does people, do the world know that? Folks, a lot of them don't. They think it's their way. Paul wanted us to remember that what he taught, what he lived, and what he stood for was worth it. Everything that he did. In fact, he's the Gentile, he's the uh, apostle to the Gentiles, you and I. We look at the Pauline epistles and we gain a lot for our church and our, our doctrines. We learn a lot from Brother Paul. That's who he wants us to remember. He wants us to remember how Paul responded. Folks, today we enjoy the fruits of other sacrifice. We live free, but at a cost. Young men and women gave their life and gave their self for you and I. But Jesus Christ, as believers today, gave it all for you. Jesus paid it all. You and I are today are enjoying the fruits of his will, his selfless will and sacrifice for dying for you. 2 Peter 1.12, the Bible says, Wherefore, I will not be negligent. How many know what that word means? Negligent. He says, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. What things? Though you know him, you're saved, and be established in the present truth, yea, I think it meet, as long as I'm in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Folks, you come to church on Sunday, I hope that you're stirred by the movement of God's word. I hope you're stirred by the, the singing of songs that lift up the Lord and remind us of where we're going when we die. That's to stir you up. We are to put others into remembrance of this act. To stir you up for a cause. Eternal life and eternal freedom. 
How many know we're in a battle for America's youth today? We are in a battle for America's unborn. We are in a battle for Americans elderly. But unfortunately, our focus and priority is wrong in America. <laughs> Preachers of the day that stand behind this sacred desk are falling and failing our country by not reminding them the cost of freedom and the reasons we are here today. In 2 Peter 3, 1, the Bible says, The second epistle, Beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir you up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Folks, we need to be reminded every day. I'm hoping and praying that everybody goes by those crosses will remember why they're there. We don't have them up there all year long. I pray that everybody that goes to a cemetery and sees a flag in front of a, a, a tombstone or a cross realize that that person sacrificed or served their country. Did you know that... The, the, all the men and women that ever served under a uniform or a military is less than 7% of all Americans. The other day, I, I just had a curiosity. I was saying, well, how many people put on the Marine uniform? I don't know if anybody saw the, in the foyer. Back in there are two World War I Marine Corps uniforms. Very old a neighbor gave them to me, and I, I would, so I, I would uh, talk about I can't I think his name was Smith. He served in World War I. He was killed in action, and that was his uniform right there. That was a uniform of a soldier that gave his life for you and I to have the freedoms we have. The Marines have only had less than 0.08% of the, America's entire population put on that uniform. When we think about the loss of life for that, for our freedoms, it ought to sober us to realize, I am so thankful for those that gave their life for me and for you to have the freedoms that we have today. This country, this state, this town, this church, we all have an origin and no doubt that its founding has been tied to the Word of God. America how many know that we have a founding? Of, in fact, there's a lot of people that say, oh, no, no, America is not a Christian nation. In fact, one of your presidents in the 2008 said that America is no longer a Christian nation. You know what? I kind of agree. Why is that? We have gone from what we once believed. The definition of apostate is going from what you once believed to another belief. This Bible is the founding of our nation our Constitution, all the amendments, all the laws that we have in the beginning were founded on the Word of God. We have symbols that remind us that. A flag. When it flies, it reminds us of why we're here. That's what flags are for. It's an ensign. Well, there's something, in fact, I know churches say, we won't fly an American flag in our church. Well, you know, I can tell. You have no idea what the sacrifice is for that flag. I am to put these in remembrance. You are to put these in remembrance. In fact, Timothy says, of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, but to subverting of hearers. And it goes on to say, here's how you do that. Study to show thyself approved of God. How do you do that? By the word of God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15 and the very next verse, he says, But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Welcome to 2023. We have been more vain and more ungodliness in this country than I've ever seen in the past. Folks, this world's a mess, and you know it. Our leaders are driving our country in the wrong direction. We have a mandate from God, and folks... Uh, and I know that we have, that the Bible tells us there's basically two ways you can witness to people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And one is with compassion and the other with fear. We are to say, yes, Jesus loves you, but hell is real. That's found in Jude. In fact, let me read it to you. Jude one twenty two says, and some have compassion making a difference. You know, sometimes the love of Jesus makes a difference to somebody's life. But watch this, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by flesh. What's that mean? That you scare the bejesus out of them. 
What is that? Folks, I don't know about you. When I served in the Marine Corps, I couldn't tell a, a hardened, battle-hardened Marine, Jesus loves you. I don't care. That's the option. That's what you get. But what you say, hell is hot and it's real. What? Hell? That's called fear. Some with compassion and some with fear. That's how we win lost souls. Folks in America, in its day today, we are forgetting what's happened. You can tell by the court's decisions that they make for our schools and our churches and our homes. There's no respect of God's word. There's no respect of his sacrifice. And I believe with all my heart that America is on the downward spiral of, Je of Romans chapter 1. And not only the downward spiral, but it's getting worse and worse. And we are taking the low road on morality. We don't have the high road no more. Our second U.S. president, John Adams, said this. Before I say that, let me read Psalms 917. Listen to these words in Psalms 917. See if you don't recognize the country we live in. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. If we're going to memory, memory anything, it's going to be God. I know we memorialize those that have sacrificed. Folks, but when you forget God, God says the wickedness comes. Let me tell you how we began. John Adams, the second U.S. president, and a signer of the Declaration of Independence said these words. Suppose a nation in some distant region should take the Bible for their only law book, and every member should regulate his conduct by the precepts that are exhibited. Every member would be obligated to, in conscience to temperance, to fragility, to industry, to justice, to kindness, to charity towards his fellow man, and to piety, love, and reverence toward Almighty God. He says, what an utopia, what a paradise would that be? Folks, we are not there anymore. Our, that, that president said that this is what would happen if we do. Sadly, we have not. John Hancock, the first signer of the Declaration of Independence. You remember his big name. In fact, people use it as an interim for a, a signer John Hancock. He said this, Resistance to tyranny becomes a, the Christian and social duty of each individual. Continue steadfast and with proper sense of your dependence on God. Nobly defend those rights which heaven gave and no man ought to take from us. Folks, do you know that the British uh, colonies were tyrannous? They were the ones putting and suppressing us. And by the way, you were revolutionists. We went against the status quo. Do you know there are those out there trying to go against the status quo today and suffering greatly for it? Those that are on the right side, I believe, are on the right side with God. But those that are on the wrong side, I believe, are still on the wrong side. Samuel Adams, another signer of the Declaration of Independence, said this, And as it is our duty to extend our wishes to the happiness of the great family of man, I conceive that we cannot better express ourselves than by humbly supplicating the supreme ruler of the world that the rod of tyrants may be broken to pieces and oppression be made free again, that wars may cease in all the earth and that confusions that are and have been among the nations may be overruled by promoting and speedily bringing on that holy and happy period when the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ may be everywhere established and all people everywhere willing to bow to the scepter of him who is the Prince of Peace. A founding father said, bow the knee to Jesus Christ. You won't hear that from Washington, D.C. anymore. They say, bow the knee to me. I'm the greatest there ever was. I'm perfect. There's nothing wrong with me. Bow to me. Don't you know the Antichrist is going to do the exact same thing? We ought to bow to Jesus Christ. There is a coming a day. The nation has rejected God. In Jeremiah 3.21, a voice was heard from upon high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their ways. They have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, you backsliding Christian, I will heal your land. Backslide, ah, uh, behold, come unto thee, and thou art the Lord thy God. Would we not recognize this today in 2023? Sin has caused our demise and always will. 
And there is a provision made at Calvary for each and every one of us to bow the knee to our Father and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus says, come unto me, all they labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Do you know that one of the things I realized about war? It's hard. It takes everything you got, and then some. You know what I realized about this war we have with the devil? It's hard, and it takes everything you got with the Lord. Even though we're human, even though we have frailties and we are weak, he says, come unto me that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. This morning I was praying, God, help me. Help me to get through this day, one day at a time. That's how he does it. He gives it to you one day at a time. As we remember those that gave their life, remember in John 15, 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Guess what Jesus did for you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but through the world might be saved. Saved from the world, the devil, and your flesh. That's your battleground today. I hope to be publishing a book called Mind Warfare. And it's about the fight that you're in for your life. That you're in today. Don't be a casualty. If you want to die for your faith, die standing up for the Lord. Die bowing to Jesus Christ. Folks, no doubt our faith is going to be tested. Today and tomorrow and the next day. Who will your trust be in? Yourself? Your government? Your president? Your bank account? Your social security? That's going to end next week? Think about that for a second. Who do we really trust in? Who do you think can get us through until tomorrow? His name is Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you, God, for this day, Lord. What a blessing it is to serve you, Lord. Father, I'm asking you, Almighty God, as we continue to worship you in song, God, this morning, in this song of invitation, I pray that we read these words of this song because this world does not want us to worship you. This world does not want us to be anything near you, about you, or for you. But God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would focus on you and bow the knee. Father, and that this world and these things of this world would grow strangely dim because of it. Father, let us keep our eyes on you. Let us remember the sacrifice you made. As we remember the sacrifice for those that allowed us to even be here today to worship you in spirit and truth. Father, we remember the ultimate sacrifice, that in all things you may have the preeminence. And God, we give you the preeminence in this Memorial Day. We give you the standard, dear God, today. It's your flag we fly, your scepter we desire. Father, we bow the knee to you today, looking to you, the author and finisher of our faith. Come, Lord Jesus, come. As we sing this song of invitation, Lord, I pray that you are blessed with our service today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Turn with me to page number 87. <coughs> page number 87. If you think about these words a little bit and you look at them. How many here are weary today and troubled? If you're not done today, it'll be maybe tomorrow. Let's sing this. Stand and sing page 187. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. <coughs>
look at the Lord. The world does not want you to look at your Bible. The world doesn't want you to come to church. The world doesn't want you to have anything to do with God. In fact, I'll tell you right now, there will be out there today trying to change your mind about what you did today, about how you are acting today. The world would like you to think about other things. If we continue to look at the Lord, I'm telling you right now, those things won't bother you. This world will seem small, and your countenance will be praised. Sing that chorus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonder. that's the one you need to go out there and tell people about. The one that you got saved with. That Lord, that Savior, He's going to get us through this. Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here and serve you, dear God. Help us as we go to the world, Lord, and to show them your will for their lives. Help us, God. Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed. Amen.